Why are we here again? Because Radia will tell us all about the safety features and practices in nuclear power plants. That's right. We are inside a simulation of a real nuclear power plant. In this way, you can see how it's made and what safety and security precautions are put in place. Okay, are nuclear power plants safe? Let's see. The safety measures of a nuclear power plant begins with its siting. This involves selecting a site for a nuclear facility, considering safety factors such as site geology, hydrogeology and hydrology, seismology, and meteorological and demographic characteristics. The design of an NPP takes a thorough account of safety aspects and the structure should be able to withstand any relative natural event. It should also have a solid safety system in place to endure any natural calamities. We do have a lot of calamities in the Philippines. Because nuclear power plants use radioactive materials in its operation, it must satisfy a set of fundamental safety functions as defined by the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is the leading international organization promoting the peaceful use of nuclear energy. One of these major safety functions is to confine radioactive materials. The last thing a nuclear power plant needs is a typhoon blowing off the roof of the plant or forest fire coming too close to it while it's carefully handling those radioactive materials. That's good to know. This is why, once the nuclear power plant is built on the appropriate site, defense in depth is put in place. What do you mean by defense in depth? It is the basic design philosophy of nuclear facilities, which provides multiple independent levels of protection against the release of radioactive substances. Examples of these can be seen on the typical barriers confining radioactive materials within fuel rods, or the thickness of the reinforced concrete used in the containment buildings. Engineered safety systems are also put in place to ensure that at all times, a fission chain reaction can be stopped and the nuclear reactor can be shut down, fuel can be cooled, and radioactive materials are contained. So can anyone just go ahead and construct a nuclear power plant and start its operations right away? No, because before allowing an NPP to be constructed, commissioned, and operated, its safety must be assessed through a systematic and rigorous analysis of the plant's design against a defined set of conditions. It will also undergo licensing from an independent licensing agency before it can operate. National regulations also frequently require that systemic safety assessments be made periodically throughout the lifetime of any nuclear plant. Once an NPP is constructed and staff are hired, a safety culture is also needed. It is the set of characteristics and attitudes in organizations and individuals to assure that safety is the top priority. In practice, this is about using a well-devised system of education, enforcing compliance with regulations, analyzing abnormal events, and searching for ways to prevent them. A prerequisite for safety is having well-trained nuclear reactor operators. Operators undergo lengthy and rigorous training that concludes with a state examination to ensure that the staff has necessary qualifications. Personal qualifications are also regularly assessed and reviewed by regulators. Once it's working and the power plant starts handling the radioactive materials, what is done to the nuclear waste? Nuclear power plants have a nuclear fuel cycle. Once the irradiated or spent fuel is unloaded from the reactor, that's when the back end of the nuclear fuel cycle begins. Interim storage. After being used in the reactor for about five years, spent fuel is removed from the reactor. Spent fuel is highly radioactive and produces a lot of heat, requiring them to be stored in water-filled pools for a duration of 5 to 10 years. The water cools the spent fuel and also shields the radiation while waiting for its radioactivity and heat generation to decrease through time. After the initial period of cooling, the fuel can be loaded into large shielded casks in which natural air circulation maintains it at the required temperatures. This is known as dry cask storage. 
The fuel spent can be stored in dry cask storage facilities for a period of 60 to 40 years. Reprocessing and recycling is the operation by which the unused fissile material, uranium and plutonium, in spent fuel can be recovered with the intention of reusing it in a new nuclear fuel. Spent nuclear fuel still contains a significant amount of fissile material that can be used to produce energy. For the case that reprocessing is not considered, spent fuel can be disposed of in deep geological formations for an indefinite period of time until a non-hazardous level of radioactivity from the actinides and the fission products is reached by decay. Engineered barriers are placed to contain the spent fuel and retard the dispersion of radioactive substances. These barriers include a canister, a buffer made of bentonite, host rock, backfill, and closure. Sweden and Finland are proceeding successfully with their long-term plans to develop deep geological repositories. Decommissioning of a nuclear facility includes removal of all radioactive materials, decontamination and dismantling, and finally, demolition and site clearance. The end goal of decommissioning is to release the nuclear site from regulatory control to made available for other purposes. Is there a risk of radiation exposure by being near a nuclear power plant? There is, but let me show you this graph. This is the average dose rate from the monitoring post of Tokyo. It can be seen that measurements of the radiation around an NPP site is significantly below the level of other naturally occurring and human-made radiation sources. I see that there are many layers of safety across all aspects of a nuclear power plant. Yes, because the fundamental safety objective is to protect people and environment from harmful effects of ionizing radiation. This is the top priority that supersedes other competing demands. The industry is continuously learning and evolving from the past incidents through nuclear technology's history. This has led to improvements in design and safety systems of even newer and better nuclear power plants. NPPs also employ knowledge management and quality management of its operations to ensure that they are always up to standards. That's right, Smarty! Nuclear power is suitable for these kind of vessels because they need to be at sea for long periods without refueling. Plus, it gives a submarine the power it needs for propulsion. In the future, the limits of fossil fuel use in transport may bring marine nuclear propulsion into more widespread use, but unfounded fears about nuclear use and its safety have caused political restriction on port access. Cool! So, do you think nuclear power plants are safe? After learning all about the protocols and safety measures, I'm thinking operational nuclear power plants can be some of the safest places in the world. Thank you, Radia, for telling us all about it. Anytime! <laughs>